we hear, of course, in our first reading as we continue the story of King David. We hear about David's lack of faith, his lack of faith in God, the God who called and anointed him to lead the people of Israel, the God that David had come to know early on as the only source of his strength, which is why he succeeded so well in the task that God had given to him. But today he sins grievously. It may not seem like a serious sin, but he counts all of the men that he has in his armies. It would be as if we sat and counted every penny we owned to assure ourselves that we had enough to be able to make it through life. There is some sense of security in our assets, in what we have. But it's a false sense of security. Jesus tells us that over and over again. Think of the man who had so much, he didn't know what to do with it, so he built bigger barns. That very night, his life was taken from him. To whom does all that build up wealth go? What we are being instructed in this morning, my brothers and sisters, is there is only one security in life, our faith in God, our trust in him completely. It's a message that David learned the hard way, of course, and his sin required that there would be consequences that affected not only him, but all of the people of Israel. It's true of our sins. We're part of the body of Christ. Sometimes we think our sins are only between God and me, but they affect everybody. They disrupt the communion and unity of the body of Christ. Every time we sin, there are consequences, but we hear, of course, of the mercy and the kindness of God who always forgives those who repent of their sins. David knew what he had done. He asked the Lord's forgiveness and it is granted as it always is. And what about the family of Jesus from his own hometown? He has been going everywhere, healing the sick, performing miracles, but not in Nazareth. They think the Messiah should be someone else. In fact, in the scriptures, it says no one will know where he comes from, but they claim that they know Jesus, who he is. Isn't he the carpenter's son, the son of Mary? And they close their hearts to what he says and what he does. And sadly, we hear Jesus exclaim at the end of the gospel, he was amazed at their lack of faith, and he is unable to perform any miracles because they have closed, closed themselves off to grace. Today we honor St. John Bosco, one of the great saints of our time, a very simple holy man who desired to become a priest so that he could serve the youth, most especially those who were orphaned, left in the streets. There were so many of them at the end of the 18th century, left to themselves with no chance for being educated or having a success in the future. And St. John Bosco loved those children. And he believed that the reason they were in so much trouble was their lack of love by others and their lack of having any relationship with God. They'd lost their way. And he embraces them. Other people joined him. They formed the Salesians, who took care of thousands and thousands of young boys, especially in the streets of Rome, giving them hope, but most especially teaching them that they were loved by God helping them to understand at the very center of their lives was the call to put their faith in God, not in the things of this world. We live in a very secular society. 
you know, so many of our secular institutions of learning might do well in educating our children, but they have forgotten God. We're not just about teaching the mind. We need to lead our children as parents, as the church, to a deep love for God, a relationship with the Lord. We can't make it on our own. There is no security at all in life. No matter how successful we are, how wealthy, how important we might seem to be, if we don't have a love for God, if we aren't involved in the life of the church, if we don't understand that Jesus is at the very center of our lives calling us to salvation, we're lost. Let's take that message to heart and learn from what Jesus teaches us today, that he is alone is the source of all life, the only one through whom we have any hope of gaining the prize of eternal life.